We came back. How was it going? <laughs> How was lunch? It was macaroni and cheese and uh, a bun and some milk. So it was good. Oh, that's not it's bad. It's milk and everything. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Chocolate milk or regular milk? Oh, just regular milk. Oh. Chocolate milk's, I guess that's like, I don't know. <laughs> special <laughs> <That's> special. special. <laughs> it no. is a holiday today, you know that. I know. But okay. I, think, I think they had chocolate milk on Christmas. A bit. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah, they got milk with everything here. So you know the steak, so yeah. Oh, a lot of dairy, the dairy steak. Yeah. So, so they got they got cheese with a lot of stuff too. So macaroni and cheese. Yeah. yeah. Well, we brought you some non-lactose Powerade if you'd like it. Seriously? Yeah. Well, yours. Um, wow. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. Thank you. Yeah, you bet. Um, so we didn't want to take you, you know, all day, um, and we really do appreciate being able to sit down and talk with us. Um, there's a few things we want to kind of clear up, wrap up, and then if you have any questions for us, um, that'd be fine too. Um, don't let me forget, did you want to talk about Ronnie real quick or no? I talked to your dad uh, while we were at lunch, oh, okay. and uh, a couple things we talked about, your property and you know waiting on the DA's office. But then he also, the reason he called was uh, Dave Cullen. He's gonna, okay. Yeah, he's going to go pick up some of your personal items out of the house. Okay. Today, so. Okay. Yeah, so I'm just going to let you know that. So. Okay. We didn't tell him anything about what we talked no, about. No, he doesn't oh, know okay. we're here. <clears throat> he doesn't even know we're here. No. Oh, okay. No. Yeah. He just lives, like, around the corner from me, so right. that would be good. Yeah. Yeah, so he just, a lot of times anybody, when anybody goes over there, they usually call just so I can give everybody a heads up. That way, you know, I don't have an issue with neighbors calling and say, you know, somebody's the house. Okay. So that's how we do that. Okay. Has anybody been like checking on the house to make sure like pipes haven't broken and all that kind of stuff? Water's off. Okay, good. I do know that. Um, I was worried about like, you know, you know, sprinkling all that stuff. I, just, I usually blow them out and all that kind of stuff. Right, but right. I figured, yeah, the I don't know if anybody was actually going through it or watching it or anything. The water's, water's been off for a while. I do know that. The okay. power's still on there. So. Oh, it is? Yeah. So, um, fortunately, unfortunately, I don't know how you want to look at it, but um, we need to get a tiny bit more into the weeds and into the mechanics of um, the time you showed up at the house when Officer Coonrod was there okay. till the time when uh, we were all done talking. Okay. Um, so that includes at the house, that includes at the oil site um, and everything. Okay. okay. Now, part of the reason we need to get into that is, um, I mentioned before, how we're just really want to get into the mindset of what happened. Um, and you can imagine this is really important for us in the future when we're talking to a guy that's in your position to say, you know, this isn't really a monster. This is more like a Chris Watts. And boy, we remember with Chris, had we asked this or had we done this, we really could have been better. Um, and so that's why we want to get into the mechanics of it a little bit more with you. Um, and that's going to mean exactly how, exactly when, where were you, what was, you know, Shanann wearing, or, or all of that, right? Um, so we really just need for you to take a deep breath and get into it with us. And would it be all right if we ask you some specific questions? Okay. Um, so one of the first things we want to talk about was when you came home, so this is after they had passed, and you came home and met with Officer Coonrod. Um, one of the first things we see on the video is you walking into the garage and then into the uh, Shanann's car. Do you remember what that was about? In your car? Yeah, like I think you opened the door or something? Yeah, you opened the passenger door and it looks like you were looking for something or maybe you picked something up. Do you recall what that was? Not that I'm aware of. Not like, not looking for anything, but maybe just opening the car door to see if, like, you know, see if sir. Because uh, I think Nikki was saying, I think I see the car seat still in there. Yeah. Something like that. And I was, okay. you know, when I opened up the door, I looked in just to, uh, it's like the first like reaction of like whatever, everybody's just waiting, pretty much waiting to get in the house. Pretty much. Right, right. Okay. So I didn't, I wasn't like looking for anything as far as specific, specific or anything, but I was just, I don't know, just reaction going in there and, and I know everybody's there. I don't know what's going to happen when they get sure. in the house. 
you can start a nervousness maybe? Yeah, I yeah. think a lot of it was out of nervousness. Sure, okay. And then backing up a tiny bit, I jumped forward <coughs> too, too far. Um, so she comes home at 2 in the morning. Um, she gets into bed. Was when you guys had sex together, was that pretty quickly after she came home? I think it was around like 2.30 because she, I felt like she'd be in bed for, for a little while. A little bit? Okay. Yeah. Um, and forgive me, it's, it's not a pervy thing, but she woke you up? Yeah, she was just, I could, I could feel like, feel like a hand was okay. on me, like rubbing my leg or my chest or something okay. like that. And then that was, you know, signal it's go time type thing? Pretty much. Okay. She was like, yeah. Okay. okay I get it. Um, and then that was maybe a half an hour after. Mm -hmm. And then after that, is there any talking? Or was it just kind of a just like, just quiet in the middle of the night? Yeah. <laughs> just like I just, I just felt, I just felt her hand around me. I'm just like, what? Um, and it was time like, to go. Yep. Yeah. Okay. That's funny. All right. Um, then a couple hours of sleep. Alarm goes off. Mm -hmm. Okay. I guess what I don't understand is, so then there was some talking, mm -hmm. and then. How did you get on top of her? How did that happen? It's like when I got into bed, I just pretty because she was laying. When she when she was sleeping, she was laying like face down, which she really never does. Okay. And I was I just got into bed and I kind of nudged her and then she like kind of rolled over and then I was just like just like right there on top of her. Okay. And so that was after you'd gotten ready. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you go down, you make your food. Oh yeah, I got like cottage cheese and another couple things that I made okay. my food that day. Okay. And then so this is we talked a little bit earlier today about. You know, there was all of these things playing in your mind where you just didn't even want to go another second without having this conversation or without some sort of completion, right? Mm -hmm. And then so you come back, she's asleep, and then you just kind of nudge her? Yeah, I just kind of like, you know, hey, look out for a second. And was there a nudge talk for 20 minutes, or was it just a nudge and then all of a sudden you're on top of her? No, she's pretty much on top. Okay, so that happened pretty quickly. Yeah, it was, that's how we kind of pretty much talked. Okay. That was just right there. And was there talking? Yeah. Okay, and so a nudge, a talk. She's laying down, and you're standing up. I was on. I was like, I, I crawled back. I got on my side of the bed. Uh huh. And I just like nudged her like that. Oh, okay. Yeah. And then you're talking while you're on top of her. Mm -hmm. Okay. That seems confusing to me. Is that actually what happened? Okay. Um, and so. But she was fine, like just laying there, like you trying to talk to her while you're so on I think top she of her. Maybe I thought we were going to have sex again or something. Oh, okay. Uh -huh. Okay. And how long did you talk? About 15, 20 minutes. Really? In that position? Okay. And was there any sex? No. Okay. Maybe she, I'm basically from the position that we were in, maybe, she maybe thought maybe I'd try to go again. I don't know. Okay. And, and I don't harp on it too much, but I'm just trying to think, if my wife's four months pregnant and it's five o'clock in the morning and I want to talk and I want to get on top of her, that's just not going to fly. So that's why I'm confused. I know. So. Is that really what happened? Yeah. Okay. And then talk for about 15 minutes, and then it's heated, and then your hands are on her neck. Okay. All right. Um, what did the talk? What, what did the talk consist of? Basically, just the, about how well, at first it was more of like the you know selling the house type of thing, or not going to Aspen, or trying to maybe go in a, at a different time, and then just switched all to the. I don't feel like I'm in love with you anymore, not compatible. And went to that. And that's when I got to the heated part of it. Okay. Did she ever say at some point, get off me or anything like that? At the end. Yeah. That's what she said. I don't want you to feel like, you know, because where I was, it was kind of like she didn't want me to, like, to, you know, sit down or, like, hurt the baby or anything yeah. like that. So it was just kind of like, Did so she was. accuse you of cheating at that point? Mm hmm. So what'd she say? She's like, I knew there was somebody else. I knew there was somebody else. That's, I, I didn't come out to say, you know, that there is somebody else, but she obviously already knew. And your response to that was what? Did she say, no, there's not? <clears throat> you deny it? I believe I just denied it, but I mean, at that point. Because I'd always, because when she would accuse me at the beach, it was a lot of like, there's nobody else, you know, there's nobody else, you know, or like, you know, and when we got back home, she always like said, there's got to be somebody else, because she'd always talk to her friends, like Christina or somebody on text messaging, and they'd always say, there's got to be somebody else, if he's 
not wanting to sleep with you, like he's getting it from somewhere else and there's, you know, there's nowhere else. I mean, she couldn't really say that I would get anywhere else because I was using those Anadarka gift cards, so it's kind of like, you know, she just mean me getting distant, but she knew and I just, that's, that's mainly the reason why I talked to her because I knew, like, after that night, it was just like, it felt like, I just felt guilty, more guilty than ever before. Um, and then it seems to me, and sorry, I had a lot of thoughts here. So we know what happened and we can talk about it today kind of openly. Um, and that's what we need from you is to just kind of say, you know, I know it sounds bad or I know this or I know I feel this way, but physically this is exactly what happened. Um, so if you could tell us that, it seems then that it would have had to have been a, a pretty quick transition from two people talking to this, yeah. right? Is that what happened? Yeah, it was like, I don't want to, like, try to think of the last last things we were talking about. But it was, you know, I don't feel like I love you, love you anymore. And then she was like, you're never going to see the kids. Oh, that was it. that's perfect, Chris. That's exactly what we need. Okay. And I know it's hard to walk through that again, but that's exactly what we need. So then, as soon as she started talking like that, then it was on. Okay. But it was you saying that you didn't love her. Is that right? Okay. And her saying, you're never going to see the kids. Yeah. Okay. I can imagine how that made you feel. I'm sorry. It didn't, it didn't warrant what it did. Yeah. Um, and then the fact that she didn't scratch at you or anything, is that just because it was so powerful? I don't think it. I mean, I didn't feel like I've never done that before, put uh -huh. my hands around anybody before, so I don't even know what kind of force I was putting on her neck. Okay. But it, like I said, two to four minutes, I don't know if that was two to four minutes. Did you cover her face at all during that time? Both hands on the neck. Okay. And so, if it's done right, I mean, that can be a matter of seconds before someone on their carotid loses oxygen to their brains out, right? Did it seem like it was that quick, or? Okay. Maybe a minute, maybe two? Okay. Screaming? Okay. Uh, all right. Uh, did you see eyes go bloodshot or anything like that? Okay. okay. And you then, kept talking about the mascara. Did you see mascara on her face? It's, it looked like it was like... Uh, that's what I attributed it to. Is it, was she crying? Is that why? At what point did she start crying? When I'm talking about the relationship, about not being compatible. And when she's talking about uh, there's somebody else, and that's where she started crying. That's what I thought, you know, it was mascara. Mm -hmm. I didn't know if it was it. I don't know. Oh, I, don't, I don't know. I don't know. Was there a pillow or something you were wanting to ask about? Yeah, so there was, was there ever a, at any time a pillow or the sheet or anything involved in like that? On, on the face specifically? No? Okay. No, like the sheet I kind of wrapped around the, oh, get downstairs, that's about it. The one that was at the site? Okay. And then the other sheets, they were in the trash. At what point did you put those in there? I think that was... Obviously after I was in the house. Yeah. I think it was probably the next day or so. Okay. I think it, like, I'm not, I'm not sure, like, what happened. This is hard to talk about, like, when yeah. string of some, I don't, like, Sometimes I guess they use the bathroom, yeah. so it was like I think that one of the major reasons why, because I think that had happened. Oh okay. 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 You said she was sleeping face down at one point. Was her face in the pillow, or was it turned to the side, or how did that? Kind of like on the side. She was kind of like a side sleeper, but she was more more down than usual. Okay. But then she turned, rolled completely onto her back mm -hmm. when you start talking to her. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> Um, now, as hard as that was, if you need to talk about the girls too, okay? All right, thank you. Um, so with the girls, you talked about how they uh, got into the truck with you and were alive, okay? Are you 100% sure that's true? Okay. Um, can, we, can we ask, go back just a second? Mm -hmm. um, you talked about before that Bella walked in, though, to the bedroom. Can you tell us about that before you left? Yeah, it was... I was just getting, like, getting the sheet off the bed, and she had walked in, and she had her 
go paint blanket with it. She was like, what's, what's wrong? Drop a pun. And where was Shanann at that point? Yeah, just pretty much on the bed, but she was face down. Wrapped in the sheet? What'd you say? I just said, you know, she didn't feel good. That's when I tried to carry her downstairs. Shanann? Did you carry her like this? Did you drag her? How did you do it? Tempted to, tempted to pick her up and, and pick her up and take her down, but I lost the grip after a little while and just had to pull. Did Bella see you do that? What was Bella saying? She started uh, crying a little bit. She's like, "What's wrong with mom?" And what'd you say that time? I said she's. She's a smart girl, she didn't she know what was going on there. Mm -hmm. Did she ever touch your name, try and wake her up or anything? No. She didn't want to see her or ask to see her or anything. And so that initial time that she see you put uh, Shanann in the truck. So she was kind of following you? Okay. So she followed you and you put Shanann in the truck. Yeah. And then what? I got, Cece wasn't up yet. She was just in her room. She was getting ready to get out of her bed. And then they were just walking around the house. I was with the, with my lunchbox and stuff in the truck and then I grabbed the kids and I put them in the bench sheet in the back. Okay. And so Shanann, is she kind of on the floor in the back? And they're just on the bench. Okay. Um, and both alive at that point. Is there any reason you would feel uncomfortable to tell me that they were not alive at that point? No. Okay. It could, it wasn't a, a video or anything? Um, it's hard to see. Okay. And I, and I believe you. I'm just, um, I'm trying to make sure that I'm giving you all the opportunities to be comfortable enough uh -huh. to tell me exactly. Okay. Yeah, they, they were alive. Okay. They, trust so, me, I hear that every, every day when a fellow is talking to me on the site. Oh, really? What do you mean? When she said, Daddy, no. When we were driving to the site, she said, Daddy, it smells. Oh, okay. So that that goes back to maybe Shanann evacuating herself? I don't know if it was that. I, you know that smell like of like a skunk maybe sometimes? Oh, okay. So I, I got some, some kind of smell that way, but I don't know what that was from. And was that maybe outside the trap or was that in? I don't know. Okay. What did you guys talk about on the way out? They were pretty quiet. They just, you know, laid next to each other. Okay. Maybe Bella in her lap and CC in her lap, just back and forth. Oh, okay. Just trading off like little ones do. Mm -hmm. Okay. Were they awake? I think well, one would kind of fall asleep, the other one. And CC would maybe kind of trade off back and forth. Were they talking to you? Just about, you know, just saying, Daddy, it smells. Oh, okay. It was early in the morning, baby, showing up that early. Yeah, okay. Did you have to, so did, you didn't have to wake CC up? No, there was the noise from trying to get she ran down the stairs. Did she kind of fall down the stairs? No, it was more like trying to get her down and like, you know, from the steps, maybe her foot hit the next step kind of thing. Oh. Know, they, they're licensed. So then, once you get to the site, tell me what happens. So I get to the, that one site, and I get Shannon out to that, pull over to the part right off the side, the site there. Okay. And the girls are still in the truck. Okay. Did they ask you what you were doing, taking mommy out, or? Yeah, I don't remember what I told them, but they did ask that. They, what they say specifically? It was more of like, you know, what are you doing to mommy? Okay. And then is that when you buried her? I didn't, I didn't, I don't, I don't remember if, it, if I dug a hole there first or, but I don't, they didn't watch me do that. Okay. So then pulled Shanann out and she's maybe just sitting there on top of the ground? Yeah, like off to the side. Off to the side, close to where she ended up. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. 
and then the girls, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. You mentioned Bella was first. Cece was first. Okay. Um, where exactly was she when it happened? In the back seat. Okay. Was she just right next to Bella? Mm -hmm. Okay. And so, um, so once again, was it a hand over her face? Was it? It was a blanket over and my hand. And then your hand. Okay. And then so that just stopped her from breathing, type thing. Okay. Did she struggle at all? So, but my, it, I was blocking her face, and my hand was right here. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. You had one hand here and one hand over her mouth. And we're just pushing her against the back of the seat, type thing. Okay. What was Bella doing? She's sitting there next to it. She didn't know what was going on. Okay. Could she see you? Okay. Um, and then, did that take a minute or two? Didn't feel like nothing. I had no light concept at the time at this okay. point. Okay. Tell me about what you were thinking. I wasn't. I was thinking it's what would happen. Yeah. Or any partial hint of what I feel for those girls and what I feel for my wife, but nothing is, none of this would have happened. So I don't, I wasn't thinking. Okay. So she's in the back seat. Okay. Um, and then once she's gone, then is it Bella next, or is, did you pull Cece out? I pulled Cece out. Okay, so once Cece's gone, Bella's still there, in the car, alive, and then you pulled Cece out, what'd you do with her? Okay. So, she went into the tank, and Bella was still in the back of the truck, alive. Okay. Um, with regard to that tank, did you bring up Cece, put her down, open the hatch? Brought her up, opened the hatch. And I put her in. Okay. When we talked the very first time we met, when we were talking about this, it was a matter of just lowering, lowering her down. Okay. And so she went in feet first. Okay. Was she able to fit pretty well? Was it snug? Mm -hmm. I think so. Okay. Did you have to like move her around a little bit and get her in there? I think so. Okay. All right. Not, I didn't have to like you know hit her like you know okay. my back. It's not like you stomped her in. No. Okay. Um, and then close the hatch? Yes. Okay. And then went down to Bella. Tell me what happened there. She said, what happened to Cece? Or she asked, it was, it was the same thing, the exact same thing that happened to me as Cece. Did she ask you that? Okay. So Bella's pretty smart. How does she sound when she asked you that, Chris? She said that, that, that soft voice she always had. Yeah. And what exactly did she say? She said exactly the same thing that happened to me as Cece. And then I said, I don't even remember what I said. Okay. I don't know if I just said yes like a horrible person or if I just put, the sh put that blanket over her too and did the same thing. Same blanket, same way? Mm-hmm. Okay. She said, no, Daddy, and that's the last thing she said. Did she say, no, Daddy, like, please, no, Daddy, type thing? Did she say, I'm saying, don't do it? She said, she, she said, no, Daddy. Okay. Same way, hand on neck, hand over mouth, or hand over blanket, which is over mouth. Okay. Did that take a couple minutes? I feel like it. Okay. Then, then what? I just noticed she had a couple spots, like over her eye or something, and I picked her up and same thing. Okay. Um, and we talked a little bit earlier today about it. You don't remember why a different tank? Okay. And there was no reason? No, there was, I mean, they're both the same tanks. I mean, they're just like, I don't, I don't know why I did two different things. Okay. There's one, I, I never got up there, does one catwalk lead to both? Oil can go into either tank. Okay. But if you go up one set of ladders, does that eventually yeah, yeah, get you both? It's one catwalk. Okay. Now, Bella was a little bit bigger. Was she harder to get in? It, it felt like a little bit. Okay. And so was it a matter of just kind of maneuvering her? All right. Um, so then they're both in there. Um, is there any reason to think they were alive when they fell in? Okay. Pretty 
sure. Okay. So once that's done, then what? Go over to Shenan. Uh, clear away some weeds and dig a hole. Okay. Did you have a shovel? Yeah, we have a shovel, a rake, and a weed, weed racker as part of our tools. With that rake, if I remember right, it was, was part of it was sitting there because it was broken. Oh, did it break as you were digging or something? No, when I was right, when I was like smoothing the ground over. It, on this day, it broke when you were doing that. Okay, was that after you were all done? And it seemed as though maybe the first people that got there saw it was, was it stuck in the ground. I guess it was like not like standing up, but it was like laying down. Oh, okay. Were you planning on coming back? I mean, I don't know. If, I don't think so. At this point, then, this is just before then, in a couple of hours, you would make it back home mm -hmm. to see Officer Conrad. Okay. And so once she's buried, then... That's when people start showing up, I believe. Did you notice, was she cut or broken or bleeding in any way? No. I mean, I know, like, the... Bloodshot eyes you were talking about, and I was that at that point. Yeah. Other than that, no. Um, had she partially given birth? No. Do you remember? Yeah, I remember. Remember, she, she had a shirt and think blue underwear on. Okay. That's it. And so at that point, she was, okay. Thank you. I know that wasn't it. Can you, can you tell us about, <clears throat> obviously, you know when the district attorney got up and talked about Bella's injuries and stuff. Yeah, I didn't want to hear about that. Right. Can you tell us about that? As far as, like, her biting her tongue? And ripping her frenulum, which is that connective skin from your lip to your gum. It was gone. Her gums had, like, a, it looked like a hole in them. From, and the pathologist said it was from her Obviously, struggling to get away. I didn't know what that. I didn't know what that meant. Yeah. Could it be that that's what happened? So like, I didn't put my hand like over that, over her, like like that. Is that what you're talking about? Well, it would have been just downward pressure on her. This area. I didn't. I didn't see any of that when I picked her back up. Like, it was, was it like her lip was like missing or something? Or? No, no, see the skin that uh -huh. connects there? Yeah. That was ripped. Like, it was gone. So it kind of made like I a mean, hole maybe, in her gum. I, I'm just thinking maybe it's like, if she, maybe like if her mouth hand was not her head was like twisting back and forth, could that have done that? Yeah. I had a blanket open. I don't know. Like, did you feel her doing that thrashing? Now you're trying to get away. I or? felt her head moving back and forth. You did. But I don't know. I didn't know that it happened. Could you tell she was trying to yell or say anything? Or the only thing that was the daddy no, and then like the some kick around here and there, trying to like trying to breathe. Mm -hmm. During that time, do you remember getting phone calls from Nicole Atkinson? Mm -hmm. After, uh, I think, before she got to my house or after? Just any time during that morning. I think I didn't get one until I saw her on my doorbell camera. And that was, what, 10 o'clock? Yeah, I was right around there. Okay. And so at that time, had everything been done out of 3319? Yeah, it was at a different site, was at a pumping unit. Okay. So you went from there when it was all done, so the girls are in the oil, uh, Shanann's in the ground, and maybe a little bit of cleanup. Um, was there any questions we had about the sheets or any garbage cans or, or garbage sacks? No, I think okay. I answered those already. All right. So then you went from that site to another site to work? And yeah, because we had, there was a, at that survey 319, there was a little spill that, that's the that's where we most everybody showed up there because that's still that was there. We're trying to figure out what happened. Oh. Well, you're on that subject. Let me back up. The, the night before, you had some text messaging about going out there. Mm -hmm. Can you talk about that a little bit? Yeah, that was, I think, 
Friday that we had figured out there was a spill out there from like his old site it's set up a little different. So what had happened was there was a downcomer and then there's a sidecomer going into those oil tanks and one of the downcomers is tied into a back pressure line that split and every time it was dumping oil it was split underground and it was the oil was coming up okay. out of the ground. And we decided just to go out there on Monday because it was Friday and he had like switched it out or either he shut it in or he switched switch lines or he covered it up and see if it was going to come back or not. Okay. And then it's more specifically you talked or you text about how you would go out there and take yeah, care of it? Yeah, I was going to take care of it for him because okay. I mean, I've gone out there plenty of times. Okay. But I, I used, when another guy was out there as far as another foreman, he showed me around out there like a year or so ago and I just got familiar with the place and I got to swell them out. Okay. And so that was a genuine, yeah, that, was, that wasn't yeah. a pre-alibi. No. Because that that there was a lot of people that said that you wouldn't normally do that. I'm normally help somebody? No, like a, a field, to your position, not you specifically, but your position doesn't do that kind of stuff. Well, that's the thing. Like when I was a rover and to a field coordinator, I still try to do everything I used to do. Okay. That's still like, I wasn't good at delegating stuff. I just used to just doing stuff on my own or just okay. like taking care of it for somebody else. Right. Um, I wasn't good at the whole like, hey, you could do this, you could do that, yeah. while I sit over here. And, and well, you see what it looks like to us, I know, you I know, know. It's like, when it came up, we're like, know. Making plans to be out there, you know, that day. But that's not what it was. That was natural. natural. No. Okay. I was just I was going to help him. So how long were you there? What time do you think you were done with the girls? Hard to really tell. I mean, I think everybody started showing up there by around seven forty-five, eight o'clock. Okay. So. And then you were there. Did you see them to a different site? Yeah, it's like the I think it was either the ten twenty nine or the six twenty nine or something like that. And so, how long were you at that site? The rest of the day until I got called away. So then that was you were there for at least a couple hours until you heard Nicole Atkinson on the doorbell. Yeah. And then I think there was even more time after that until you started coming home. Yep. And you got home at two, two something. No, it was closer to one thirty. Okay. Around there. Yeah. So somewhere around you know nine o'clock ish. All the way till twelve thirty or twelve or one or something, and then and they came home. Yeah. Okay. Um, there was a lot to do about coming home and listening to that Metallica song. Have you heard about that? I've heard, of a, I've, heard, I've heard of a Metallica song that people have been. Some of the singing lyrics to it called "Battery." Do you remember doing that? That was uh, Nikki Passenger. She liked the song, or she just wanted to know what it meant. Oh, so I just, that's, why that's why you looked it up. I just kind of looked at the. I didn't have the CD with me, so I didn't. Okay. You know, I and just kind of looked at the words. A little bit. And was that on the way home? Mm -hmm. Oh, that was just a different time. That was a different time. Okay, and, and so the media you probably got a hold of that because it says battery. Right. Okay. But it's like you know, it's it's more about like a like a family coinciding as a battery. Okay. You know, not like you know hitting somebody. Sure. Yeah. Why did Nikki want to know what it meant? How did that come out? No, it was it was kind of strange. I mean, she she's very into different types of music, and I mean, music I never really thought I'd ever listen to. And like, she got me into a few things there as far as music was, but like, battery was just something that she asked me because I knew I knew Metallica pretty well. She just wanted to know, like, hey, what's this? What's this? The lyrics lyrics mean? You know, I just down, yeah, just looked it up, just to look at all the words together and just put it in put it in my head again and all the. Just made something out of nothing. That's uh, why it was strange. I got those lyrics in a, in a, in a letter. Oh, so now does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, someone sent the lyrics to it. Yeah. I think that guy from California. The oh, was the kid? Yeah. Point. The yeah. senior? Okay. Um, with regards to then when you get home, the, you and the officers, you know, saw what they saw. You mentioned that you took the ring off her finger, um, and then the book. You, did you throw that in the trash? Okay. Um, there was another book, Body of Evidence. Does that sound familiar? That you had in your cell. A body of that um, Patricia Cornwell. Maybe Does that sound right. Probably. Mm -hmm. Did that in Lowell County? Mm -hmm. What was that about? That was just one they gave me. Who gave it to you? The. Uh, 
Not or, your attorneys or, or? Oh no, they couldn't give me books. Oh. Okay. Uh, any book that I had was given to me by their book cart that they had. So you didn't ask for that book or? No, they just kind of give me like, hey, I read some Brad Thor books. Um, he's like a military guy. And Patricia Cornwell, my grandma had always read her books and thought it was, I mean, she was always, she loved those books. And I'm not sure if that was probably the, one of the first books, not the first book I read there, but probably the second book I read there. But it was like they had to give me, here's four books, choose. What other book did you read? Do you remember? The first book they gave me when I was in Suicide Watch was, I, I don't know why, but it was Murder at Something. And I was like, I looked at him and was like, that's, that's the one we got. I'm like, okay. But, huh. They handed you that, that mm -hmm. book by itself, no other choices? No, the next book I got, another guy that was, I guess they're overcrowded there, a guy was sleeping on a cot under, outside my door. He's like, here, try this one. It was one that was based like in the 1800s. It's more of like a, like a situational book, like a time period book. So that was a little more yeah. calm for that one. That was the first book they gave me. You don't remember what it was called, Murder at something? We were at the Truman Center. Truman Center? Yeah, I think it was, um, I remember the King Center. Um, I think it was written by Margaret Truman. Did you read it? Mm -hmm. Was it good? Yeah, it was decent. I, I never read, I've read a book in a long time, so it was it was different. But like like some of the books they gave you, like when you're in the hold, I know mean, you're not allowed to have books in there inside the Bible, but the the, uh, the counselors there let me have a couple of books, and they just like I you know here's the ones to choose from, just the ones they had. I don't like mystery books or something like that, and that's the ones. Mm -hmm. It's kind of crazy they're giving them, like, murder books, murder mystery books. You hope that it wasn't some sort of yeah. insult or, you know, you can only hope. Um, okay. <clears throat> what are you thinking of yourself now? I don't, I don't. <laughs> Back... Back when all this happened, when I was in Will County and everything, I just I didn't I definitely didn't feel like myself anymore. Like it, when my attorneys would talk to me and like you know talk to some of my friends and like some of the stuff they would say, like like they would say good things, but I'm just thinking to myself, how could even anybody even say those things about me now, being what happened? It's like people that I knew and that I never talked to again. That I, like maybe I was like the roommate like back in the day or like went to school with or. Something like that. They just, now they're just going to say, that's, you know, it's like Chris Watts, that's, you know, guy with the high school, that's the guy, like, you know, get all this horrible stuff to his family. And now it's like, I know I shouldn't really, you know, take to heart what other people think about me so much. It's just a matter of, like, what God thinks about me, what I, what, like, what he thinks, what his opinion is, not, not anybody else's. Because, I mean, everybody's going to have their opinion about everybody. Like, before I got in trouble, I mean, I was always the guy, hey, look, they're judge somebody on TV. You know, like, like that guy that's no orange junction. That guy that's, you know, that killed that guy. That guy that raped that up somebody. You know, like, oh, you know, that guy's horrible. Now I'm the, and it's like, now like when we come out at like six, six o'clock at night and there's something on the news, like I try not to even pay attention to it. It's like, I don't want to be in that position where I'm judging somebody else because that's, you know, what people were doing to me. I don't want to be that person anymore, but I just hope that I can, you know, step back and kind of look at everything that I've done in my life, and then, like, up to that point, and just, like, I did some good things, but a matter of the most important thing, I screwed up the worst. I just hope I can at least maybe help somebody in the, however much time I have left. Was was it your intent the whole time you were taking the girls out there that they were you were gonna do that to them? Honestly, it's like when I got this when I got there, I didn't I didn't think it was gonna like you talking about the tanks or just, yeah, like well just I mean I, I just I, the thought process and all this none of this makes sense. That's why I know you guys keep asking these questions because it doesn't make sense to me. But I, I guess I mean like did you? You could have done it before you guys left, I know. and not had him, you know, alive in the back seat. They could have been with Shanann in the back seat. I didn't, I didn't think about anything really, like as far as like how everything was going to happen. I don't know, like why it happened. 
like why I left everything out there in the field and why like all this stuff like just none of this makes sense at all. But to Tammy's point, did you think that it, they might be coming back, or did you know they wouldn't be coming back? No, it's. I mean, the whole trip out there. I mean, it was like I was on, like I wasn't thinking. It was like. In my mind right now, I'm thinking back. I'm like, I'm hoping that I wasn't like that. I wasn't coherent enough to make that decision to where I knew I was going to kill my girls. I was, I'm just hoping that you know, like, like no, no father would want ever want to do anything to hurt his his blood and flesh. But I did that, and I just don't understand how it happened. So I mean, I even read books that say you know, like, no, no guy would ever do anything to hurt his children. Like, this happened. So I always think of myself like, did I, was I even a dad at one point? I don't know. But I just, it's just going to take a long, long time to guilt and everything to get this through. Have you asked for forgiveness from God? Mm -hmm. yeah. It just takes a long time for me to forgive myself. And that's one thing that's happening. Thank you one day for getting me too. Stay with and I think I think you said earlier that you were so angry at Shanann or whatever that you were gonna you know anyone in your path of destruction or whatever was gonna get it basically kinda is what you kinda made it sound like. I'm not saying that exactly right, but why were you so angry at Shanann? I don't know if it was just because of separated me and my family pretty much because I mean it happened at the wedding like that's the reason they didn't come to the wedding I mean I blew up at my family like, to a point where I, I said some horrible things to them back you know back in 2012 that I'll you know and I pretty much told my family that you know I don't need them anymore because I have <laughs> I, I said you know I cussed my mom out I did all this kind of stuff I never thought you know and I don't know if it was just like Man coached me on to do it, or if it was just like rage that was like I'd never seen before. And then I don't know if it was just everything that happened in July, but I can't see my kids, and I'm not sure if they would, if they're ever going to go see him again. I don't know. And it was just like I don't know if that had something to do with it. That something inside of me just triggered it, and then just like all that pins up from the wedding and everything, just like it's like a, a long fuse that finally just went to its end. What happened in 2012? There was a my mom and Shanann just like like from when I proposed to her, it was at the beach, and from then on, it was just like, like she always went up to Shanann and was like, I, I didn't need a ring like that when I was your age. I don't, I didn't need all these fancy things when I was your age. And just kind of kept boiling over and boiling over, and then we just kept they never agreed on anything. It was just like you know they. I mean, we didn't really need their help to do anything. We just like said, we'll just pay for it ourselves and all that kind of stuff. And you know, it was just back and forth. And I think she, maybe my mom just never thought she was good enough. She always thought she was hiding something from me. So, she always thought Shanann was hiding something. Like what? I don't know, stuff from her past or like you know. Oh, know. I see. Yeah. Is there conflict at a barbecue when all the families got together in the first maybe a barbecue that Shannon put together for everybody to get to meet each other two families if you call that like when you first started dating oh I remember we did have something like that but I didn't I don't remember like a any kind of arguments at any place like that I know like when I proposed to her Shanann had her family come down to the beach too. They sat, sat, stayed at a separate, a separate house. But I 
as far as like a barbecue or anything, I don't remember one that was like that. Way before then. Yeah. yeah. I, I remember the I remember the time when I asked Frank to I was okay if I had asked Shannon to marry her. I remember that little get together. I don't think So then what was the book at the wedding about? It was just my mom and pretty much my sister just she didn't like her. Oh. I just, uh, it was, they just thought, you know, that I had, that they, that Shannon had taken me away from them and moved me out to Colorado. Oh. Because we, we were in Colorado and we flew back to get married. Oh, okay. Because I, we had, we went to Colorado for Thanksgiving to visit some friends. And we decided to move out there, like, a couple months later. Okay. So, in like, so that was like April. I moved out there April 2012. We got married in November 2012 in North Carolina. So they always thought I was just taken. And she took me away out there. And then was there something with invitations or something? Your sister was supposed to sign the invitations. Or? Yeah, there was. Okay, now you're bringing some memories back. Um, there's something to do with that. And then my sister wanted, you know, her kids old. My sister wanted her kids like to ring bear and like something else, ring bear and flower girl, and then she then like, you know, she told her no or oh wait, either Shannon told her no or Jamie backed out of because of something else, and then it just like all blew up. And is that pretty close to the wedding? Yes. Yeah, a couple, within a couple weeks. Did oh, they wow. go to the wedding? Your family? Uh, my grandma did. But your parents and your sister did not go. Ronnie wasn't there either? No. Nobody was there. It was, uh, my grandma was there, and then, like, the the dance when I used, when, like, you know, the the groom dances with his mom, like, uh, it was, I would dance with Mark's mom and my grandmother. It's sad, isn't it? I mean, it all comes from a place of love, you know, them yeah, loving you and not was, wanting to get stolen. And it was a... It was a great day. I mean, everybody was really happy. I mean, it's it's always just rang in the back of my head. They were never there, and every time they look at pictures, it's just like, oh, where's uh, they're not there? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I never knew if they actually were gonna come, anyways. But as far as like, you know, sometimes they'll just like, all right, we're just gonna go, just to, just to be there. But I never knew if that was the case. And so then when Tammy was asking, why were you so mad at Shanann? Um, it was part of it, just this whole family strife? I, I, that's the only thing I can think of right now, because, I mean, there's no other reason really to be mad at her. I mean, she, we took care of each other our whole last four years. I mean, it was just like a good relationship. Yeah. I mean, it's just like... If I never met Nikki, would I ever have, you know, thought our relationship was bad? I would not. Interesting. You know, I, I, you know, that's one thing I always thought about. Like, even Nikki asked me, like, if you know, I don't want you. To, she said, I don't want you to leave your wife if just because of me. I'm just like, like, what do you mean? She said, well, just if, you know, if you met me, like, would you have known? I'm like, no. Nope. I never thought I would have strayed away from her at all. Like, I. I've never followed, like, tried to follow anybody, you know? Right. Did she, was she man checking your phone or? She always had my phone. She always checking your phone? So how did you get past that? I used my work phone. To text? And you had some secret apps, right? That was on my personal phone. I'm, Were you using anything else to contact, have contact with her? No, I just texted her with my work phone. I just. And like uh, when she and the kids went to North Carolina, she used my personal phone, and she just told me like to put pictures in a an app, and I just found that calculator. I just put you know just searched on the the app store like hidden pictures, and this calculator app person popped up. Like in your your iCloud or your whatever isn't linked together, so she would know if you're getting it, you know, downloading apps and stuff like that. They used to be a long time ago, but. When we got different uh, different phones, or uh, when our phone like our phone contact list would be synced up from the cloud and stuff like that, I just I couldn't have like she had like 
tons and tons and tons of like phone contacts. I just couldn't have all that, but it's still kind of linked up at one point. But as far as like she asked me to get my, my own iCloud account, just to kind of free that up a little bit. How about your Facebook account? You deleted that at some point. When did you do that? And why? I think it was. So we got back August seventh. Went to work. I think it was probably August eighth. That's when um, I think he was told me she told her friends about me, and I just figured you know they probably look me up on Facebook and see that she comes pregnant. I Nikki already found it. knew it probably already, but I just, that's the reason why I did that. Did you and Nikki ever fight? We never fought, but like I said, I had to like calm her down a bunch of times. Yeah, you you started to mention that when we were talking to you before about her getting upset about some video or something about being bipolar or well, she, what are you talking about? My, I think either my, my dad told me about that or John Walsh told me about it. like she, she made a couple videos like when she was just like you know talking to herself saying that she was bipolar or something like that but a lot of things was like when she realized that okay like she's the other person in the relationship that you know I'd always put my wife first over her and that's what kind of made her take a, step, take a step back a few times, and then like I had to kind of like calm her down. Tell me about those times. What'd that look like? So the first one was probably around July 4th when I had to leave her house. Because she, she wanted to kind of spend most of the day together before she went to like a baseball game or something. And like when I had to leave, it kind of just, she said, it just made her like kind of take a step back and wonder what she was doing. And I just, you know, told her, like, hey, you know, just because of, What's going like just because I had to leave doesn't mean like you know you have to just take us that I was I was like comforting her at some point I don't even know why I was doing it maybe I, I knew I was too far gone that at that point but it was because this is Shannon's piss she's called you ten times you were sleeping yeah. you had your day off yeah. and then you go outside to talk to her on the phone and then tell um, Nikki that you need to go home just in case she calls back and yeah. all that right mm -hmm. so what did she say to you Nikki she was in the shower she said okay. And then that's like when I was when I talked about like I, I calm her down. It's she's on the phone. So. And was she like we're breaking up? Like we're not gonna? I no, can't no, do this. No, no, no. She said like she didn't want to. Like she didn't think it was safe or it was good for us to see each other anymore that day. Like the rest of that day, just because of all that. And I'm like, okay, that's fine. And she asked me to come over like later on after she got back from her baseball game. And so you did that. Mm -hmm. So what was the second one like? It was basically about the same thing. She was, you know, I didn't really know it at one point, but I guess she had uh, set up a couple dates with like some eHarmony app or something, and they never showed up. And uh, she would already made plans with me, and you know. Wait, she, what do you mean? She set up dates when she had plans with you? Yeah. Why would she do that? I guess she kind of figured out they weren't going to show up. She went. I guess one one. I guess when she went to the baseball game, they never showed up, and there was another one, and never showed up either. So, so she's actively dating other people. While I never, you guys I didn't know it until like a couple of weeks later. Mm -hmm. How did you find out? She told me. What'd she say? She um, it was some, it was one conversation where I actually kind of fell asleep on the couch, and then like she had told me like I'm not much, not sure why she even told me about it, but it was it was very random, and. She could tell that it kind of like took me back a little bit because I figured she would have told me that if she was actively still like looking around. I mean, she didn't have to tell me, but I figured she. You think she told you though, so that it would hurry you up and make a decision. You're making a decision. It, it might have been, but you know, it's. She never had anybody that's actually tried to like fix things as far as like you know, hey, like I like where we're where we're at as far as like the relationship goes and. Actually, like I did stuff for her around the house, around her little apartment, and like nobody's ever done that. And she just she thought it was different. So. What about our male friend? Where does he stand with her? What's his name? Jim. Jim. Thank you. Um, he worked in the oil field, uh, North Dakota, I believe. And I, mean, I guess he's been a friend of hers for a long time, and it's kind of like a shoulder to cry on. It's always somebody that's always been around for her. And I guess he had like he's had a couple girlfriends, and just I guess he's not hadn't had much luck I guess in that department as far as like keeping girlfriends and just him and Nikki have always been good friends. 
Just platonic friends? That's as far as you know. As much as I knew. Yeah. Okay. But I think uh, they just they just been friends for a long time, especially up in oil, oil field, North Dakota, mm -hmm. or whatever he's working on. I think either Wyoming, they could go all over the place. When um, Sandy and Frank lived in the house for 15 months, mm -hmm. what was that like? It was, you know, it was tough. Just that district. <laughs> you want me to wait or? No. Okay. Okay. Um, it was tough, you know, because I mean, you go from just me and Shannon and Bella and CC to, you know, two other people and then now four dogs. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. Onyx is a, he's a terror, 100 pounds of just, Heat seeking missile everywhere, and like it was, I mean, it was cool having more people around, but like it, it was stressful. Yeah, like I mean, because with Shanann, like having two dominant personalities in the house, and with her mom there, it was kind of like what her mom would tell her kind of how to raise the kids sometimes, or like you know, do this, do that, you know, like whenever they were sick, she was like, All right, you know, rub peroxide on your feet, they'll be fine. She's like, What? Like, okay. <laughs> And uh, like I wouldn't do it, and, you know. Sandy was like, just just do that, trust me, it's okay. But like it's just like little things like that, and it's, yeah. it was like a clash every day. Yeah, it's kind of like every time I got home, I didn't know if she now was pissed or if she was okay. Because when we first got it, when they first got there, they didn't have they didn't have a job yet, and so they're just around all the time. But then like once they got jobs and stuff, like I think it was a little better for Shanann because you know they weren't around the house all day. But it was definitely stressful, just you know, just vacuuming like every other day. Yeah. And just like, I mean, cooking was great. That was awesome. There. <laughs> but you know, it's, cook. you know, it's, yeah. and I was always like, you know, because they lived, they were down in the basement, so I was, I was always really trying to keep the girls upstairs while they were sleeping, so you know, they're running around downstairs, and mm -hmm. like, I didn't want them to wake up. And I know Frank always told me that trying to waking up Sandy early is not good. So it was just, you know, just kind of like walking on eggshells a lot. Yeah, it was stressful. Yeah. Yeah. You think that stressed your marriage with the time, or? I mean, it was, it was 16 months. It was 15, 16 months. months. Yeah. It was, it was a long time. I mean, it was, it was great around the holiday times, because they were already there, and like, you know, all that was great. And sure. Yeah, it, it definitely, you know, we never really had much alone time. Yeah. Because you always had to kind of plan it out. Yeah. What was her purpose for living out there? They just wanted to be closer to the kids. Okay. Just because they're, you know, we FaceTime a lot, but, you know, it's not the same of, like, you know. All right. But two kids, it's hard to fly back and forth. I mean, when they went back to North Carolina this past time, it was the first time cece has been there. She was three. Yeah. First time her brother ever met her. So were they trying to, were they trying to move to Colorado permanently, or they just? They were thinking about it at that point in time. Okay. But, it, you know, Franklin stayed. He didn't want to leave. Sandy wanted to leave. She wanted to go back? Yeah. Yeah, yeah it, was, it was a matter of, like, they knew their house wasn't being taken care of. And they just, they wanted to go back and make, because they had, they had put their house up for sale for a little while, but never, never bought. Mm -hmm. okay. What about your financial stresses? Yeah, the bankruptcy was something I never thought was going to happen. I think that was back in like 2015, 2016, somewhere around there. But I never thought that was going to happen. And I, I never thought a lot of it was from the wedding because they just put it all on credit cards. Mm. And so it was just, and then the doctor bills from like, you know, endoscopies and just like girls were, it seemed like they were sick like every, every month. It seemed like some type of ear infection which to figure out was just like, you know, put the tubes in their ears and stuff. There's like, you no know, different operations here. A couple overnight stays in the hospital for breathing and stuff like that. And so it was just, it all mounted up. I mean, I, I never thought it was that far gone, but, you know. Was any of that from Shannon's neck surgery? Or were those bills pretty well paid up? Well, I think the bankruptcy never touched the medical part of it, because you have to be like, like, by the like the medical part of it, medical bankruptcy, and then there's like regular bankruptcy. Oh, okay. I don't think bankruptcy ever touches like student loans or medical stuff. You have to like be specific with that. Okay. But I think it just took away like a lot of the 
furniture that we had bought and then a couple other things inside the house to kind of alleviate a lot of the, I, I didn't, I mean it took, I mean every, we had to make the house payment up by phone every month and I had to listen to the bankruptcy spiel like every time and it's just like, I didn't know how long it was going to take. But apparently it was, I mean, once you're in bankruptcy it's pretty much you never get out of it. Yeah. I think it felt like. You guys weren't you guys behind on your mortgage even yeah, when I like talked to you? Earlier in it's like I think December twenty seventeen and then January, February, March twenty eighteen. That's when I took the four we took the four oh one K out, the loan out to pay for that. How was it that you were spending so much money for it? Just you know, kids and just other bills that we had and I mean, I knew the car was getting paid for by the by the bill. But, you know, I never really asked. To see, like, I mean, I didn't even have access to the bank account in my phone. Oh. So, like, I, I never really asked to see what it would have looked like, like how far. But I just know she called call me and told me, "Hey, can you pay the mortgage today?" I'm like, yeah, cool. And that was, just, <laughs> that's, you know, from the from my little four wheeler incident where I sold it without actually paying it off yet, and she thought, like, no, you're never touching the counts ever <laughs> ever so i'm like okay that's cool with me but it's i never saw the account or what was in there i just like hey there's my like when i worked along my ford i got my check i just brought it there yes so. there was a hair care company i think it's called monat is that ring the bell do you know anything about that mm -hmm. like maybe hair maybe hair dye i don't know looks like uh do you know if she did like an auto order through that company and had stuff delivered for her? Any kind of hair care product or hair care dye? Not something, to, I mean, she had like little, I mean, there was something she, like a little gift pack she had delivered every one, like once every month or once every two months. Had like a different array of different products in it. Don't remember where it's from? Okay. No. Was it said Monet? Monat? M O N. M O N A T. Mm -hmm. uh, right, well. Okay. There was a there was an order that was made, like two fifty one. That's why I asked if it was like an auto order type. Thing. It might have been an auto order. Yeah, it was, yeah right. it might have been something that I know that Nicole Atkinson she's into all that stuff. Maybe maybe she ain't got her. Maybe she ain't got her something, or maybe it was something she recommended. Okay. How about the HOA thing? What happened there? She was mailing to the wrong address. Oh, they no. changed her address, and she mailed to the wrong address for a year. And then they, we got a letter in the mail where we didn't like sued over it. We had married choice for a year, so we had to pay double for either a whole year or a couple months. That, that sucked. What happened to all the money that she sent to the wrong address? I don't know. <laughs> They said they wouldn't credit it or anything. I'm not, I'm not even sure what that address was. Um, hmm. She said it was just something that she didn't see. I was like, well, I'm not gonna. I wasn't gonna harp her about it because she had. I mean, she did. She did so much. So I was like, I'm not gonna like say what the heck are you doing? No, I'm just like, sure. Don't need that to blow up. I know she felt bad enough. So Chris, what do you think we could have done better? What what could have made you tell us the truth that night? What did you need to hear from us that you didn't? Not really. I'm not sure what really goes to people's minds when they're in an interrogation room. During my, or when I was in there with you and Graham, I was. I was, you know, just nervous. I was, I mean, I knew I had done something wrong. And I knew you probably already knew or were going to find out. And it's just like, you know, I watched enough, you know, hate like TV shows to kind of see like, okay, what's going to happen next type thing. I never knew if that's right. But I think it's just the, the horror of like knowing what you did and trying to tell somebody else what you did that's what kept me from doing it because I I didn't even want to admit to myself that I had done anything. 
I knew, I knew what I had done. I knew how bad and horrific it was. I knew how bad I was going to hurt other people. I didn't. I just couldn't even admit to myself that I had done it. Cause I, like, I couldn't even tell my parents I did it until like two weeks later. So were you trying to save us from the I, horror I, of no, it, or it was just a matter think? of I couldn't admit to myself, and how could I admit it to you? So do you think any amount of us asking you things different ways would have helped, or do you think anything would have helped? I think if maybe you didn't ask about if Shanann hurt the kids, if you would ask the other if, you know, if something in that, a different order of question, maybe it, it would have came out a different way. Because that's the only reason I went with that story is because that was... The well, you weren't giving us anything I know, else. I know. <laughs> That was the problem. But so if you think if we would have said what, do you think? You would have said, you know, I think you'd have probably had to, if the, the video didn't show them in the truck, you probably had to have lied and just said, we, we saw the kids in the truck. I mean, I hate to say you'd have, you'd have to have, you know, lied to get me to say what you wanted me to say, but it might have been that. That we saw the kids in the truck. When we were talking, there was a point where you just said, can I talk to my dad? Did you just want to tell him first? I just wanted to, you know, tell him that, you know, that I loved him and that it's probably the last time we're going to see him again, as far as, you know, outside of a of a cell. Yeah. You're looking forward to it coming. Yeah, because I'm just talking about on the phone, you know, it's just totally different when you see him, yeah. see a face, you know. It's like when we got on that little video conference in Love County, it was like, it was all I could do to stop, just not to like just break down on that phone. So, yeah. so it'll be, it'll be good to see them. What do you get to do when they're here? Just like this. Like in a room like this with a if table? If there's a or? visiting room, visiting center, like down in my unit, and I don't know what it looks like, but I know they said it's like tables, and it's pretty much they they set up a time and get a couple hours. That'd just, be good. Yeah, just in that little center, and I'm not sure what else is in there, but I just know there's tables. I think there's like vending machines and stuff like that. But, it, but it'd be good to see them. And, Unfortunately, they can't bring their phones in or anything, so I was hoping they could maybe show me a video or two, but I don't know, for a picture. But they pretty much only let you come in with your ID, that's it. Can they mail you still photos or anything like that? Yep, they yeah. can do the still photo. This is sometimes they try to play a video over the phone for me, and it's mm -hmm. like, you know, it's really like fuzzy and crackle a lot, so really can't hear anything. Do you have any other questions for us? Or do you ever wonder, I wonder why they did this, or I wonder why the investigation went this way? Or... I mean, I mean, I, can, I think the first time I, I was brought in, I think it was like the, the 14th, I believe, uh, when I met you that night. Mm -hmm. I mean, you told me that it was a bunch of other people coming in for statements. Was that true? Yeah. Yeah. There was a couple people. Okay. Yeah. There were a lot. There were a lot, actually, okay. yeah. Okay. So we had a whole board worth of people listed and oh, okay. agents out. Sure. They didn't get the attention you got that <clears> night, but... <laughs> yeah, I just, I just wish none of this had ever happened, honestly. It's just like you guys could have never had to come to us and you guys never had to meet me or anything like that. None of it ever felt real, especially like when I, when they put me in that, that suicide watch cell and the last thing that one of those guys said was like, good luck, and just slammed the door and I just kind of knew from then on that was, that was it. And the deputy said that? Uh, one of the guys, in, uh, one of like, they call them the SOG guys, special operations group in the Will County Jail. Yeah. That was it. Next morning, like when I got out to take a shower, I saw the newspaper and there was this big piece cut out of it. I just didn't know what that was about, and I just kind of saw like my last name around like, oh. And again, just. 
we came back to talk to you someday, would you be inclined to talk to us again? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, they just took me off guard. I had no idea. Yeah. We didn't really want to tell you we were coming just oh. because we didn't want you to have anxiety about us coming. I would have had anxiety. Yeah. yeah so we figured the blitz attack was probably <laughs> the best course today. Just like the first time we met? <laughs> Right. <laughs> oh, you knew when you were meeting me. <laughs> I, I just did, yeah. You just don't have all your props here today. That's right. That's our <laughs> props, man. That was <laughs> sophisticated legit. equipment. It is. Right? That's right. Sophisticated instrument. I don't know that that's going to happen. We might not ever see each other again. Uh, but I didn't think we would, honestly. Yeah. Your experience is definitely interesting. Um, you yourself are definitely interesting. see things in you that we didn't expect to, and we don't see things in you that we expected to see. Um, so it's very interesting to us, and it's, um, I hope you can take to heart that today was a lot about us learning how to do better, how to talk to people better, how to do investigations better. I mean, like, I had never talked to a police officer before, or like FBI, CBI, anything like that, so that was all new to me. Like, like I said, everything that I've ever seen as far as, you know, the authorities have been on TV. I didn't, I didn't know like what to expect, especially when I got in that interrogation room. I just felt like exactly what it looked like. Just like, you know, you got some poke and prod and then leave. Come back in, it's like give me time to stew, give me time to like, you know, think and it's just like it works. It just really like I don't know, just drills more questions into your own mind instead of like, you know, just staying in the room and just asking questions all the time. Mm -hmm. You liked it when we took breaks? Like, you think that worked on you? I did. So you were, like, watching videos of the girls at one point. Do you remember that? Them giggling and laughing and... Like, when I was in the interrogation room? Yeah. I don't remember that. You don't? I didn't. I, didn't, I thought you, had, you, already had my, you already had my phone at that point. No. So. We didn't take your phone towards the end. Towards the end. Okay. That was weird for me. It's... It's like when you put that picture in front of me. Yeah. And that's what probably made me do it. it, was, it was, I didn't have a signal in there, but that's like the videos I had on my phone. It was just like, I wish I had taken those videos out more often before all that had happened, but it was, that definitely, definitely got in my head a lot. I don't know where that picture was from, because I'd never seen that picture. The one we showed you? Mm -hmm. Really? I've never seen CC in that dress before. Really? We talked all about a lot about that dress. Yeah. Is that just and you were saying making it up? I never saw her in that dress. You were even telling us when she last wore the dress the and boots. the boots. Not that dress. Those are her favorite winter boots and she wears oh, the them winter all boots. summer. The winter boots, yeah, but that white dress was a little different. I've never oh. seen that picture. No, because you talked about buttoning it up. You said, I remember because I just, she just wore it the other day and I had to button up the back and must have been a different dress, but not that one. Huh. Is that that picture? Was that in North Carolina, or is that? I don't know where the picture came from. Pulled it off of from. Facebook, Shannon's Facebook. So maybe it was while you weren't there or something? Might have been, yeah. Because yeah. you don't recall that, huh? So there's a lot of pictures, I guess, I didn't see when they were in North Carolina that my parents have. Like, especially, like, 4th of July and stuff, and I had, like, 4th of July dresses on and stuff like that I never saw. Oh. Some I had in my phone, but you know that that white dress I never felt like they were like she was going to church or something. I just never saw that white dress. And Bella's little dress that she had, and her little her little awkward smile there in the back. Yeah, that that definitely got in my head when we did that. When we had the picture out there for you. See, and to us, it didn't feel like that because we know, really didn't, didn't elicit any, any emotion. I don't, yeah. I don't show emotion that much. Were it's like my dad. It's like I, we don't show emotion. Like, were you fighting it down, or were you just not a guy to show it? Like most of the time, I'm not a guy to show it. Like I, I hold it in as much as I can, and like you know, in my cell, I you know, I cry a lot, obviously, but like I'm not really a guy to show it. Okay. I don't like. I don't know. I just, I try to hold it as much as I can. You're, you were a difficult guy to read, especially at the house that day. That, was, that makes total sense now. 
I knew it was like just because I was like in shock or just like disbelief or just like some people said I looked like I was a heartless, no soul person, soulless person. Mm -hmm. When they did like the TV interviews or something, I'm just like you know I'm just glad I never saw it. I don't even want to know what I look like, what I sounded like. But you were obviously feeling it then. You just weren't. Yeah, just like no, nothing registered at all. Everything was like just harbored deep down, and then like I think it was just one night when I was in my cell, it just all hit me all at one point. Not the fact that I was in jail, but the fact that like everybody was gone. Yeah. And no, none of it. I think if it was like, in, you know, like if something happens to your family, and like in like an accident, like a car accident, or like something like horrible like that, it registers at one point. But if like if you did it, I don't know if like it just doesn't register at one point. It's, it's like in my head, it never registered. Does it seem real now? Oh, it's, it felt, feels real, like every it day. Does. Like I see pictures, I just know like, you know, where they were at when they were doing that. You know, where, you know, when I first had like a, some type of hearing over the phone and I heard like uh, Frank and Sandy and Frankie and them, they were on the phone and I forgot what kind of hearing it was something about like a probate hearing or something. I knew exactly where they were in the back. I heard the birds chirp. I knew they were on the back deck and I just like walked back to my cell and just bawled my eyes out because I knew exactly where they were. I knew how many times the girls were, were back there and it's just it weird how emotion is processed differently for me than everybody else. Mm -hmm. Like something like you said, like you said like um, if you lost your kids in the grocery store for five seconds you'd be a, a mess. Mm -hmm. And then like, you know, for me, it'd be like, you know, I'd be, I'd be panicked, but I probably wouldn't cry. I'd be like, like looking around trying to find them, but it's just like, this process is different for me. I never knew why. Never know why. I don't want to think I'm like a cold-hearted person. It's just a matter of just, just don't show it. Show the emotion as much as other people do. Even when, like, you know, the girls left North Carolina, like, you know, her chance brother and mom and dad were all crying when they left. And it's just kind of like, you know, I never really saw my parents get like that when they left. So it's kind of like, I don't know if it's like you're born that way. Like your family doesn't show emotion like that? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, like, you know, my dad couldn't really speak at the sentencing hearing because he said he was kind of like, he, was, he said he was going to lose it. Like, like lose his emotions, like that really hit me. It's kind of like I never seen him like you know like that, like like vulnerable. Mm -hmm. Like nobody really ever seen me that way either. And that's why like maybe I just was it ever like you're a sissy if you're like that, or was it just something you don't I, just never I did? Just, you know, I never saw my dad cry, so maybe it's just something that you know was in in my brain that maybe I should never cry. Maybe. It's, I was your mom like a loving mom, like a doting mom, and you know would give you affection and hugs yeah. and kisses? And oh yeah, she'd always like ask me like you know what was going on. Like she said, I was always hard to read. She never, she never knew what was going on. But did but, she still try and give you affection mm -hmm. even growing up? Yeah, she just, she always. My sister was always a parent. Like it was always like what was going on. She always just like she was always open with me. It was always just you know closed off. And. She always wanted to know what was going on, like how I felt. And I'm just like, no, yeah, okay. That's all I give her. Even if something, even if something was wrong, like I would have probably never said anything, because like I just you know, deal with it myself. But I don't know if that just growing up that way just kept me in that way. You deal with things on your own, but then they build up so much that you can't deal with them, and they take them, take a hold of you. You never thought in a way you could take hold of. Do you think that was a result of just bottling up for so long? Definitely. What do you remember your dad saying at sentencing? I remember there was a scripture, it was a 1 John 1-9, one and then like a lot of it, the other, their representatives said for him, and my, my mom said, a lot. my mom spoke, but everything my dad had written down, the, the person said. But, you know, there's, you know, he always, he was talking about going to the games and 
races and stuff like that. And going to being my coach and everything like that. And so that you know I can experience the same type of joy doing that for my girls. I remember your mom saying she loves you and she always will. Yep. That was pretty important to hear. I think at the end she said, I forgive you, son. Yeah. That was big, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And your dad, when we came here today, we were just hoping and praying that you would take your dad's advice. Do you remember what he said? I hope if you ever get a chance to talk, you can talk about it. Okay. And I think that's what today was. Don't you? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think one of those didn't expect it to be today. The DA made some comments during that sentencing hearing about your emotions and having no emotions or you remember all that? Yeah, just like, you know, he lied to us from the start and a couple other things. I believe that's what he was saying. What do you think? Do you think he was anywhere close to what do you think of what do you, basically what is your opinion of what he said in that? Right. I mean it's it's gonna be, you know, Taking all his evidence and putting in the story that he that he wanted to convey, and like if you don't know me, that's where you're gonna that's where you're gonna portray me. Like if you take everything from August 13th to now, like that's how people are gonna know. That's how people. That's, there's no other way people are gonna opinionate themselves about me just by what they see right there. Right. They're gonna say, okay, they look at the guy that did that did the interviews on the 14th, and they see, okay, that. That guy should be like, you know, on his hands and knees, like trying his eyes out. And what's he doing? He's just like, you know, he's just talking. Okay. And they're just like, you know, I know, and maybe got some information, maybe from like her friends saying, like, he was cheating on her or something like that. He's a cold person. He was, you know, trying to do this and that. It's like, they don't know me. They're, that's always going to be their opinion about me. Because, mm -hmm. like, there was one church service, uh, the only one I've been able to go to in here, and uh, it said you're not defined by one moment in your life. And I think that's like people are defining me by one moment, one moment in my life. They don't know like what happened before or what can happen later. Yeah. So I just hope that you know, may, hopefully one day people can stop stop judging everybody. Yeah. I just tell the people in here that you know, I don't even want to know what they did because I don't want to judge them. Like, you know, like, I'm not that person. Like, you know, they know what I did. I'm not going to ask them what they did. You know? Makes sense. You did show some emotion during that hearing. Um, what part did you think you felt most emotional? I think I felt when Frank was talking about, you know, when he, um, I didn't know what to, what to expect when he first started talking. But you know, he all said I was the evil monster, and that 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 rang in me. And he said I tossed him away like garbage, and that hurt. And you know, when Sandy was talking about that video about a when Bella was calling me her hero, and that 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 triggered it a lot there. And then when Frankie was saying, you know, like I'll never be called uncle again, but you'll never be called a dad again. And that really stung. When my parents got up there, just like just hearing my mom and dad talk, you know, just like they really couldn't look at me. That they really couldn't look at me, but I just know, like you know, everything they said, just saying they they forgive me and that you know I'm still their son, no matter what. Yep. It was, I know, like even my attorneys told me, like you need to show a little more emotion because I guess they first time I went to the courtroom I didn't you know I didn't know what to expect I was still like new to everything just in shock about what was going on and they said I was just a cold person just looking at me so was, when I was when I did the plea and at the sentencing hearing it just all, all the felt was more real than anything
I never knew I, I could have a relationship with God like I do now, but I just, that's like the amazing grace with all of this, but I just wish nobody had to pay any kind of price for this. I know there's a purpose for everybody, I just, just hope that I can get, find mine. What I think is seeking peace, right? That's good. It's the only thing you really can do right now is to seek peace and hope and pray that everybody can find it too. Good. For everybody that was involved, I mean, for, for all of you and just all your team and everybody. Friends, anybody that was involved. What do you want to happen with this information? I mean, I know you're probably going to tell uh, Frank and Sandy and Frank, you just kind of give them a little closure, right? Yeah, I don't know how much I'm going to tell them. Obviously, you know Sandy better than I. She wants to know everything. Um, but um, I'm going to digest a little bit before I talk to them about it. Um, so I don't think there's any rush on that. And then, um, but other than that, I have no intention of talking to anybody outside of law enforcement. But uh, what would you like to see happen with it? I mean, I mean, I'd like to tell my parents, you know, when they get here, instead of like finding out anywhere else. Yep. So now, like they've they've been bombarded with information from like, you know, from the the Amanda girl to the Trent guy to the. Yeah. From like people going on Inside Edition saying they knew me or went out with me or had like whatever else with me, and it's like I don't I don't want them to think that it's like other like false information going out there because like people are getting hold of information like where did they get this information from type deal. You know? so Would you like to see those people charged? You no, know, people are, people take advantage of situations, and you know they gotta. Honestly, they'll have to look into themselves and just figure out why they did it themselves. So, I mean, I don't think charging them would, would help. I think they just need to work out their, work out whatever they got going on within themselves. I mean, if... Did you ever have a profile on Tinder or anything like that? Any of those dating websites or anything? No. I just had Facebook and I had Instagram. I didn't even know what the WhatsApp thing was called. That's when I was like, John. You never heard of that? No, I was just like, I don't even know what that is. Man, this guy's fishing for something. So, I'm sorry, you had to waste your time and go out there and talk to him. It was a big time waste. It was a big waste of time. Yeah. But you would not want to be listed as a victim in that case, as far as him being charged with like false reporting. I mean, it's. Whoever's gonna try to get their five minutes, fifty minutes of fame, whatever they want to do with this, I mean that's that's on them. I mean they're if he's willing to do that, then he just need, he needs to need to, he needs to figure out what's going on with himself before like, you know, I don't I don't think Charlie can with something's gonna fix that. So it'd just be a waste of time, I think. Anything else before we send it anyway? Um, don't be afraid to ask. <laughs> <laughs> How are things in Colorado now? I mean, since all this has happened, everything's quiet now. Everything's yeah, cool. And well, we had another guy murder his um, fiance, girlfriend, whatever you want to call it. So that's made a lot of news too. I'm sure you've probably seen that on the news. No. So. Everything here is based. Mm -hmm. I think the only thing here was like that Jamie Kloss thing. I don't know if you heard about that. Oh, thing. yes. We right. were just talking about that out front. That the girl was kidnapped. Yeah. She yeah. escaped after like 90 yeah. days. Yeah. That's insane. That was crazy. He'll probably come here. Everybody yeah, they here. said he's in some county jail. Is that right? Yeah, Barrow. 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 You guys stay tonight there, watch out. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Definitely. Yeah, like Do you the, mind if I take a picture of you just to show what you look like now? You just look so different then. Well, I just, you know, like, 
Like, it's not going to go on social media okay. or anything. It's just for like our own records. Okay. Is that okay? That's fine. That's Were you asking him something? No. Really? Nah. Oh, sorry. No, I was just going to say it's like the, the roads in the background are scary enough. You know, I know. The one when it's snowing, it's mm -hmm. horrendous. Of ice racing. Actually. Of ice racing? Yeah, but we had spikes on the tires then, so. Oh. Alright, Chris, we're gonna let you get back to your door. I'm good. One minute to finish your drink? Yes. Okay. Okay. They will let me take that back. <laughs> I had to shave. They, they recommended I change my appearance at the RDC. So. Why is that? Just so people didn't recognize you? No. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I did. I just shaved it all off. And that razor, like I said, the razor they have here, it's like a, it's a single blade. So like I'm like a safety razor, right? Oh, it's, it's more than safety. It's just like it's more safety than actually a razor. <laughs> That's why he doesn't shave. <laughs> Like a sharp rock, or <laughs> right? Just, just imagine shaving the same spot for like five minutes, <laughs> and then finally something starts going. Yeah, it starts just like, it's like, like warm it up or something. I don't know. You'd probably be better just plucking them out on your fingers or something. <laughs> Everything here is for safety, so like, yeah, I think like once I get moved to GP, I could have something different. So. Oh, that makes sense. Most of the guys in my unit can't have razors. Okay. Well, that makes you feel better, probably. Well, they don't have not. to watch me. The other guys, they stand out. They stand next to them while they shave. So that would be kind of weird. Oh. So they have any other jobs, like if, uh, like fleet? Would you be able to go work fleet maintenance or anything like that? Like a class down to like a minimum. Uh, or like a, like a low, like a low medium. They have guys that like run across the street to like a records building mm -hmm. and work over there. I don't know, like you know. They said it takes a while to get classed down from like maximum to medium. Yeah. So it's, I'm not sure like if they've been here. I don't know if they'd ever take me to Colorado or I don't know, I know what their plan would be. Okay. I'm not sure if that happens or not. Yeah. It's all pretty secretive and then right up to the minute they do it. Mm-hmm. Definitely. You guys going to do exploring around here? <laughs> so, everything's covered in snow. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it's freezing. We were such winds when we walked out. <laughs> Maybe go rent a snowmobile or two. <laughs> 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 yeah, right. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. Same with baseball season, but it's not. So, good. Yeah. Blue play or something. Oh, NASCAR is back in full swing. I saw the last. The last two laps last night when we came out. Oh, did you? No, I went to over like 200 NASCAR races growing up. So yeah, I went to one Daytona 500. Almost, it was one that Mark Martin almost won. I was hoping he would, but he got passed by Kevin Harvick coming out of turn four. I was just like, oh. yeah, yeah. See, it was a wreck fest. I heard so. Yeah, sorry, I didn't get to watch it either. But you went to NASCAR school, didn't you? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, that was fun. It was, it was a blast. Yeah. It was like my childhood, just reliving it all over again. Right. Just seeing race cars on dynos and doing fabrication welding, all that kind of stuff. So it was really cool. Hmm. Not sure if that school's still over there anymore or not, but I'm guessing so it is. So do you have to be escorted back? Is that what they do? Yes. Oh. Yeah, like the unit I'm in, we all have to have escorts because it's a special management unit. So guard escorts you everywhere. Yeah. So what uh, about when you're all playing basketball together? Are the guards watching you? There's three of them in there. Do you ever get in fights playing basketball? No, we're just, you know, I mean, we're, you know, guarding each other, like blocking everything that happened. Everybody's we're cool with each other. Good. Yeah, I'll take right there. Fly back tonight or tomorrow? Tomorrow. Yeah. Could have flown back tonight, I guess, but 
don't know what time the flights are even. It's probably the only time you ever come. My brother oh, went yeah. to school there, so. But I had never visited him when he lived there, so. That was my first time driving through yesterday. It's a cute little town. Actually, this town's cute. Honestly, like the downtown. Yeah. It's a pretty cute mm-hmm. place. It's just so desolate because it's so cold right now. <laughs> I think it was like a couple weeks ago, it was like negative 50 with the wind chill here. Oh. And they said like it, the PSU counselor I talked to, she said it hurt to walk in here and breathe. Wow. Well, yeah, they were saying like on the news, like for people in like Chicago and all those places not to take deep breaths because it was like freezing their lungs. Yeah. It was insane. It was like deep, the deep cold from Canada that came through here that just like it froze everything. I mean, it was like, it was so cold in ourselves, we were just like... We went out to eat, we were like, just like shaking like that because it was, it, the heat couldn't keep up with that. Yeah, there's not much heat to do. Plus, this place is old, so like all the windows like were, that's, oh. they, they couldn't insulate it. Yeah. The wind was just like, just rushing in. Yeah. Would you what? stay here if you could? I don't really know much about the state or anything about what's going on in here, but like, from what I see, it's, I mean, they say it's decent. Yeah. They said it's a lot better than going anywhere else. Yeah, that's generally the word. Is if, if if you hear it's not as bad as other places, that means it's pretty good. Yeah, so like I'm just just hoping and praying that I can help people here, and that they'll just keep me around, and maybe they'll make me like a personal care worker or something. Help other inmates, mentor them, because I guess they have a couple guys that are serving a life sentence that I've turned into personal care workers or counselors. Good. And help other guys when they come in. When I can do that. Hmm. They don't have like the normal programs you would have, but. Mm-hmm. Like some guys like try to, they want to get like extra degrees and stuff like that. They don't have that here. You have to go to one of the other places. Mm-hmm. So if you just said I want to, you know, do some more education stuff, would you get moved to another place, or is it totally up to them whether you get it's to totally do that? Totally up to them. Because yeah, like I'm not sure how that gets paid for. Right. So like I'll just. Whatever they want me to do, that's what I'm going to do. If they want to move back to Colorado, I'll be like, why? <laughs> why do I have to move back to Colorado? Oh, if they told you yeah. that, you would question that? Oh, well, like, <laughs> a- after a while, if I was here for a long time, and they say, okay, since you leveled down, we'll move you back. I'm like, like what? <laughs> but, um, you know how that would go? Are you scared to level down, though? No, I mean, it'd it take, it take years for that to happen, but, like, I don't know. I don't know how it would be like in Colorado in a DOC there. A PSU counselor, she worked in DOC in Colorado and California. She said Colorado looks like California now. Really? So she says it's bad off getting violence. Really. I can see that. Yeah, I can see Yeah, I think people in this part of the country are just different overall. It's really, you know, it's just, we kind of talked about that earlier. Colorado's not like it used to be. People here are just be nice. I think a lot of transplants probably moving into Colorado from other states. Yeah. Probably affecting that. Because, you know, Dave Colon, he said they were moving to Florida just to get away from Colorado because it's oh, already changed. Just so expensive and yeah. everything is expensive there. Mm-hmm. Houses just keep going up and up. For any kind of like a half an acre of land, you're just gonna pay the same amount of money. Here, I think it's a lot cheaper. But the pay is a lot. It's much lower, I think. Too. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, I was doing a little reading on the area, and the median house price appears like 116 thousand. Can't even buy a mailbox call out for that. No, like a, <laughs> no. a P.O. box that's right true. there. Yeah. <laughs> I want a P.O. box in Colorado? I'm great. I think I was reading like Pittsburgh, kind of like the same way. It's like, what, like it's crazy to think about how much it varies from like state to state, to city to city. Pittsburgh expensive? No, like, oh, oh inexpensive? Yeah, it's like oh, yeah. 100, 150000 for a house. Yeah. Like, you know, like, geez. But you know, deal with the weather and deal with all that kind of stuff yeah. too. Yeah. Yeah, there's a reason for that, right? Mm-hmm. Like here I guess you got like April to 
September. That's your only good months here. The rest of the time you're in your house. I wouldn't even yeah. like that. Yeah. It's you can't so do that cold every day, right? Really you start using the snowmobile for necessity, that's a problem. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. To get to the store. Yeah. Yeah. You have the license plate on a Daily snowmobile. Daily commuter. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's a really problem. Cool. Kind of walk around Title Town all the time. Mm -hmm. Are they coming? Or? Yeah, they just hit. They just literally walked away with another person. Oh, they did? They got to get to the end of the wherever and come back. Mm. This place is huge. Yeah, it's, it's a long hallway. So how far is your pod or wherever you're staying from here? It's all the way down that side. All the other way? Yeah. I think this is like the west side of the building here. Mm. I haven't gone much farther than this. Like all my stuff's always on the east side. But they got like, they got huge like pods. They're like a hundred over a hundred guys in them. So, but they move like 40 or 50 people out each day. You have a cellmate, right? Is that what no. you said? Oh, you don't have a cellmate? Nope. I'm going to go to GP if I will. Mm -hmm. I don't have one. Most of the cells in my unit are single cells. There's like three that are doubled up, but there's, they don't have the overcrowding they have, that mm -hmm. issue they had when I first got here. That's what she was saying, that there was a, like 400 extra inmates yeah. <laughs> that they ended up shipping out to different places. So. Yeah, I, I never knew what the what the assessment part of it was as far as like how, how many people they had coming in and out, but it was like a people coming in and out everywhere. Mm -hmm. So is it like a general supervision type thing like Will County is? Where you get a, have like a big room with the pods on the top or how is that? No, it's like you have a sergeant desk at the front of it and then a hallway of like 20 cells. Uh, okay. They just kind of walk back and forth. It's, the RDC was like, you have like, like a cul-de-sac of cells, three tiers, and then like the the perch for the sergeant right here, he can see in everybody's cell just from looking around. Right. Okay. But this one's like they gotta walk up and down. This used to be like a mental hospital or something. They said. Oh. Like back in the day. Okay. It's yeah. definitely old. You, you can you can hear those pipes like vibrating around the walls mm -hmm. and it's like, oh god, don't bust. <laughs> <laughs> Is it like exceptionally freezing in here? It's just like cold in the last twenty minutes. Yes. Yeah, it gets. Whew. Depending on which way the wind's blowing, depends on which side, but it gets cold. It gets, in, it gets, it gets cold. It's chilly. There was like a six foot snow drift outside my window for a little while. It's finally starting to go down. Somewhere it was like negative 50. I mean, we're the ones that chose to come in February, but <laughs> He's, she's ready for you now. Oh, okay. She is. Oh, oh. It's good to see you guys. Good to see you too. Thanks. Take care of yourself, Thank okay? You too. Thank you. Thank you. Have a safe flight. Thank you.